This video will further develop a deterministic model to demonstrate the value of this tool to consider all mechanical variables and how they are linked to successful performance of a skill. Let's examine our example of sprinting again and continue to expand the flow diagram. In this task, you can see how the distance is fixed at 100 meters. However, the speed of the athlete can be modified by changing step rate and step length of the individual. Now if we look at the diagram of running stride, we can determine more mechanical subparts to add to the diagram. From the diagram, we can break stride length into three distances. Takeoff distance, flight distance, and landing distance. The equation for the total stride length would then be stride length equals all of these distances added together. So we can now add these variables to the flow diagram. We can now move further down the diagram and look at takeoff distance and flight distance. For both of these variables, it's apparent that they can be modified by strength, range of motion, and body position of the individual. We can use the term physique to mean strength and body position. Now going back to the diagram of running stride, we can determine more mechanical subparts to add to the diagram. From the diagram, we can break stride rate into two times, support time and non-support time. The equation then for total stride time would be stride time equals support time plus non-support time. Now let's add this to our model, as we can see that we would add this under stride rate. We can now take it a step farther and look at flight distance. Flight distance is a condition of projectile motion which can be broken down into these elements. Velocity at takeoff, angle of release, relative height at takeoff, air resistance, and acceleration due to gravity. Let's add this to our model, as we can see we would add this under flight distance. The equations are a little more complicated here, so instead of equations, we can use relationships. Remember that we have a vector velocity that has a vertical and horizontal component. We can think about the components now separately. We know that velocity at takeoff is related to change in momentum of the athlete, so we can break the takeoff velocity into velocity at touchdown and change in velocity. We can break this down even further because we know that change in velocity is related to the impulse of the athlete. The equation for impulse is force multiplied by time, so that we can break change in velocity into two parts, forces exerted and time forces act. Remember that we have a force vector that has both a vertical and a horizontal component. You may have noticed that there are interconnections in the relationships at different levels. For example, time. This can help you determine how changing one error may affect many parts of the performance. Now that the deterministic model is complete, we can see that all the variables at the end of each flow branch are variables that we may be able to impact to affect performance. For example, we could look at body position. The position of the body at right hip flexion and left hip extension is important because the position of the center of gravity of the whole body over the push-off leg will determine the direction of force. If the center of gravity is too far back, the force will be aimed and the runner will achieve height and not distance. But if the center of gravity is too far forward, the leg will be in a poor position to produce force. This is assuming that the line of action of the reaction force vector is acting through the center of gravity. 